Welcome back. As I already mentioned, in this section we're going to be using an Android virtual machine in order to make this accessible to everyone. And as you might notice, I already have the Android virtual machine created right here, but right now I'm going to show you how you can do that as well. So the first thing that we need is we need to actually download the Android operating system. In order to do that, we can navigate to this link right here. And on this page, if we scroll a little bit down, we're going to be able to see all of the previous Android versions that came out. Now, we're not going to be downloading the newest one, but let's say that we can use the version 7.1, which is the newest version of the Android 7. And to download it for the virtual box, we can click right here and we're going to download the 64-bit version. In just a few seconds, our download will start. And since I already have it downloaded, I'm not going to be waiting for this as it is rather large. It is 600 megabytes. So I'm just going to cancel this, close this page. And once you have it downloaded, you will have a file like this. In order to get the actual virtual machine, you must extract the file and you will end up with this VDI file. It is the Android x86 7.1 R3 which is the exact version that we downloaded. And if we go to our virtual box, in order to actually create the virtual machine, we need to click on new as usual. And you will notice that this creation of virtual machine will be rather different. Because if you just create it like any other virtual machine that we created by now, it might actually not work. And it didn't work for me at the first time. I will show you, of course, what I did in order to get this to work. The first thing that we are going to do is going to name the machine. I'm just going to name it Android 2 since I already have one Android machine. I'm going to select the operating system to be Linux and I'm going to select the version to be other Linux 64-bit since we downloaded the 64-bit of Android. Let's click on next. Here I will select 2 gigabytes of RAM and I will proceed to the next step. And under the hard disk, we want to click on use an existing virtual hard disk. And here we want to find our Android version. And here it is. If you don't see it right here, as usual, you can click on add and then navigate to the directory where you downloaded the version. Select it from there, select it right here. And once you select it, click on create. Now, before we start this machine, there are a few things that we need to do. First of all, go to settings. As usual, first let's change the network to bridged adapter. Select your name of the adapter right here. The next thing is under the display settings, which is the thing that differentiates this installation from the previous virtual machines, is that in case you leave it by default, which is this, it might actually not work. So what I found to work for me is I increased the video memory to 40 megabytes. And I change the graphics controller from the VM SVGA to VBOX SVGA. Now, even though once I change this, it says invalid settings detected. If I leave it on the default one, which is VM SVGA, my machine will not work. But once I changed it to this and clicked on OK, my machine worked. So let's give it a try. Once we set all of those settings there, let's start our machine. Now, if you're running it for the first time, it might actually take a few seconds or minutes in order to boot up. And you don't want to be clicking on anything during this installation. We can remove this and let's enlarge the screen. And you will see this Android pop up, this command like look like, and don't type anything there. Just leave it boot up. Then you will see this Android sign, which means that you're successfully booting into your Android device. Now, in case you're having still problems in actually running this machine, I would advise you to play with display settings, either increase video memory or change the graphics controller. Just try a bunch of different settings right here in order to get this to work. These are the settings that worked for me, but they might not work for you. Nonetheless, let's go back to the Android machine. It will tell us Android is starting, so let's wait for this to finish. And here it is. Here is our Android device. Here you can do pretty much anything that you can do on an Android mobile phone. For example, we can go and click on this arrow. We can see all of the different applications right here. Now this flappy bird right here, you probably won't have. 
And you will see in just a few videos why I have this right here. This is not a game, this is actually a Trojan or a virus for this device. But more about that later. For now, we know that we successfully got our Android device working. You can visit Google Chrome, you can go to Images, go to Play Store. You can pretty much do anything that you like. These three buttons are the same buttons that the Android device has. So you can check out all of the tabs by clicking on this box right here. And here are all of the currently open tabs. So let's just close all of them. And we successfully got it to work. Now we are ready to start attacking this device. And we are going to start off with the first tool, which is the MSF 1 and the payload creation for the Android device. See you in the next video.